Good morning, everyone, and uh, I'm going to whisper because uh, it's too early. Um, by the way, I hope the Lord is glorified by this video and message, and this uh, particular topic has been burning in my heart. Um, <clears throat> two days ago, I kind of got, you know, one of those, when you open up your own page on YouTube, you get this suggestion of videos to watch, and, and the video that was on there was... Um, it was a confrontation between um, Thunderfoot, which is a renounced atheist on YouTube, and and uh, and the lady from uh, uh, escapes my mind, the Baptist Church down in uh, um, Florida somewhere. A pretty radical lady. Um, during their conversation, you can see it, and and this Thunderfoot talks to, to, uh, oh my, again, I went through a blank with that Baptist church, it's pretty, pretty radical, um, pretty crazy, uh, they got a website called God, God Hates Fags, um, <clears throat> anyway, it's funny, I mean, the conversation is pretty cool, um, you know, whatever you think of it, I hope you get to watch it, it's pretty neat though, it's gonna, it's really shocking. Uh, but there was a conversation that came up about Thunderfoot, which I call him Bigfoot because he's he's a he believes in evolution. So not not to insult him, but the theory goes together, you know. And you um, know, he told her that um. Jesus promoted homosexuality, and and she argued, and he grabbed her Bible and opens it to Luke chapter 17, verses 34, King James Version, Luke chapter 17, verses 34, and, uh, let me see if I can read it real quick, oh boy, Luke, 17, 34. It reads like this. I tell you, Jesus says, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. So he's fixated on the, I guess the sentence, two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other one shall be left. Um, he quickly assumed that the two men, let it be in the same bed, that there's a homosexual act going on. Which at that point, I think the interview was over. The lady kind of threw him out of her house. Um, but well, something struck me. So I took that verse and I started going to my fellow um, Christians. And I started uh, kind of having them read that. And what's bizarre is some of the Christians were shocked that automatically they assumed this is some kind of uh, homosexual relationship or something. And... And it was shocking to me, because luckily, I was born and raised in the Middle East, so for two men, you know, two, two young men, two teenagers, two boys, for that matter, two ladies, when they're walking down the market to hold hands or put their, you know, the men, the men are too old, our arm gets too tired quick, but when you're a teenager in high school or even in your early 20s, to put your arm on top of your buddies shoulder and and even there's no such thing as any thought crosses your mind it doesn't cross your mind and, and people that are not really wealthy that are limited in their lifestyle in the middle east you know brothers let it be friends when they come over to spend the night they sleep in the same bed Oh, uh, the poor, the farm worker, they sleep in the same bed. There's no such thing. I mean, I mean, the mind is not contaminated. And it was, sho it was shocking to me when you read that in this Western society. Quickly, our mind is so warped, we automatically think it's some kind of lusty sexual thing. Um, it scares me because that reminds me of, if you remember, Genesis chapter 19. Sodom was so bad the way they only can communicate to each other or even think or 
their thought process was so filled with filth and lust and and, and sensuality when the two angels showed up to Sodom in order to see for themselves what's going on the only way they can even impose punishment or welcome the stranger or even deal with the stranger it was through this kind of sexual com communication it was sodomy that's the only way they can you know communicate and that reminded me that our society even to a normal layman when he reads that that even crosses their mind we are contaminated we have become society of Sodom and Gomorrah. I just thought I'd share that with you. And if, if you wanted to find about Sodom and Gomorrah, I said, think of Genesis chapter 19. Uh, yeah, I think it's Genesis 19, somewhere in there. Those men wanted to know them. That's the only way they can communicate. That's the only thing that crosses their mind. That's the only air they breathe. That's the only way they can greet each other. That's the only way they had fun. That's the only way they functioned. That's the only way they they saw life. It was just this nasty and in our community, in our society, our the Western world has completely warped. I mean, it's bizarre that how you truly have to try hard to prove your heterosexuality, um, and it's just, it's just. I thought it was just thought provoking for me.